Today is Tuesday, the 27th of January, 2009, and the market's just uh, finished here. We had a very choppy session. Uh, markets made a little bit of headway, but really didn't do anything to change the picture. Uh, that is, we didn't take out any of the upside uh, levels of resistance. So we're still kind of stuck in this mess here. Uh, tomorrow, we do have a potential catalyst that could get us out of this funk that we've been in recently for the last two weeks or so, and that is the Federal Reserve meeting. Uh, they meet tomorrow and uh, announce any potential change to monetary policy at 2.15 Eastern. So what's happened a lot of times recently leading up to the Federal Reserve meetings is that we've seen uh, more volatility uh, and actually strength before the meetings themselves. Um, not trying to make any predictions for tomorrow, uh, but we we still you know are, are in the in the shorter term time frames still showing some signs of improving here. Um, that is yesterday we we came up and touched upon that 2960 resistance on the queues and then pulled straight back to that five day moving average. We saw buyers in there. This level is going to be important as far as support goes, about 2875, and uh, obviously the resistance continues to be found uh, just about that 2960 level. If it can get above there and then hold above there, then we have the possibility that this inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, could resolve itself to the upside, and we would take the height of that uh, to come up with a bullish objective somewhere around that 31 and a quarter. We still remain in a very dangerous, you know, bear market though. So you can't really get excited about the long side. You can only go in there, look for the potential breakout, and if it occurs, you know, trade it. But it doesn't mean you can trust it either. A lot of times we get a, a move beyond that resistance, and then it fails. And if it, you know, if we get a move above 2960, and then it fails to hold, then I think that you could probably get pretty aggressively short. Um, but you know. We've got the Federal Reserve tomorrow, so volatility should be large, particularly around that announcement. A lot of false movement, so probably another good day to uh, to take it a little bit slower. We do have these higher lows, and of course, like I said, 28.75 or so is going to be our, 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 our more important level. Uh, and just above that, probably about 29.15, I think, is going to be uh, an important level for tomorrow. Uh, so the you know the picture basically remains the same. The only thing uh, that really changed is we got above that 50-day moving average. That gets people excited a lot of times, but it doesn't really change the trend at all. We've got all these moving averages crossing back and forth, which confirms basically the uh, the indecision that we're in here. So uh, just no reason to bet aggressively until we get a break uh, one way or the, or the other. And, uh, you know, you know, all the rallies and downtrends, uh, like I've been saying, remain guilty till proven innocent, as we saw with oil. We saw the break past that $31 level. Uh, the market had a nice rally on volume, low volume consolidation in here. Further push higher yesterday uh, morning than as, as we saw. It had broken below that uh, daily v, the VWAP right in here. And the sellers have been in control since then. So that rally has completely failed. We're back below the five-day moving average. Oil's going to need to do some further healing in here. And in my book, I had made reference to, you know, in a bear market, you get these bounces, and it's similar to dropping a ball out of the, uh, you know, 10th floor of a building that, you know, it might bounce up to the 6th floor, and then it drops back down, then it drops to the fourth floor. Eventually, the volatility comes out of these markets. And like they say, if they don't scare you out, they'll wear you out during that sideways activity. So I would stay away from oil for now. Looks like it needs to do some healing. No reason to be involved there. Russell 2000 was up 49 cents today. Same story here. Uh, nothing really changed because we weren't able to penetrate the upside resistance near that $46 level that we've been watching uh, that's been important since, uh, you know, back... Uh, late last year. Um, so we're not through that $46 level. We've seen that, you know, it would acted as resistance yesterday. We pulled back the five-day moving average, came up just below it again today, made a higher low. So what we're going to want to see in here is that, uh, you know, this 44.75 is, is going to be in a, a, a short-term level of support, hopefully, uh, if that fails to hold that 44.25 below that. And uh, again, the, the more important level is this 43 level. Breaking back below $43 a share, uh, then we could see uh, you know, a, a quick, fearful sell-off 
back down towards these lows to test them. We've seen the volume diminishing here on this little rally. Let's take a look at that in the queues as well. We've seen diminishing volume. The buyer's conviction isn't there, so it leaves it much more vulnerable to continuing back in the direction of the primary trend, which is lower. So we remain uh, in a very high risk area right here. Um, and, you know, maybe the Fed can do something, but uh, don't pin your hopes on those guys because they've been cutting interest rates and saying all kinds of things that they're going to try and save this, you know, financial system all the way down. And everything they've, they've done has, uh, you know, I can't say it's been ineffective. We'll never know that, but it hasn't had uh, any effect as far as turning the market higher, that's for sure. So on the 10 minute time frame, again, here's our key levels of support, our main area of resistance. If for some reason we pull, uh, we push above that $46 level, uh, then you want to see a push with volume too, see that hold, and then maybe we can continue higher. But uh, nothing to get excited about uh, from the long side at all here. Financials today uh, did finish with a 31 cent gain, still uh, closing below that. Uh, uh, the, the closing low of last year, which was $9.40. So we still remain under that. We're seeing volume trail off in here as well. You know, these consolidations typically resolve themselves in the direction of the primary trend. Obviously, that remains lower for the uh, financials. If for some reason we can break back above this 945-ish, 950 area, there's there's likely to be all kinds of uh, areas where we're, we're likely to uh, continue to encounter resistance, these prior levels of support being the most obvious areas. So um, hard, hard to get excited about anything uh, bullishly in here as well. When we take a look at the 10-minute time frame, uh, this was yesterday's low, just uh, dipping below that five-day moving average. We see the five-day moving average is flattened out. It's starting to turn higher a little bit in here. I think breaking back below yesterday's lows, that's, uh, uh, what is this level here, about uh, $8.70. Then we might uh, be breaking down towards the, uh, uh, and, and, and here's where, you know, you can look at this as, uh, let's go back to the daily as maybe a little bit of a bearish flag. Or, and probably not because we're not, uh, a bearish flag would look a you know, little bit more like that, these higher lows but higher highs on that receding volume. Uh, either way, it's not a bullish picture. Maybe we can get some uh, upward momentum here if, if the shorts panic, but realistically, why would they panic beyond uh, you know, just the, the, uh, the, the shortest term uh, short traders um, because, you know, they're clearly in control. They've been right. They continue to be right about these financials. The uh, S&P 500 uh, did, you know, recapture that 10-day moving average, but again, not important really in the grand scheme of things. The biggest level, most important thing for this market is this $86 level. We continue to be trapped below there. Again, it's not a bullish scenario at all uh, that we're, we're, we continue to you know, rally up to that level and test it on lighter volume each time we get up there. Buyers, you know, they're, they're having a hard time finding buyers at these levels, and that leaves the market in a very vulnerable position. We do have this inverted head and shoulders pattern I've been point, pointing out. Uh, you can't get too excited about these patterns, these you know these reversal patterns, until we uh, clear the more important levels of resistance. We've got some resistance here at about 85.20 or so uh, from today. You know, breaking past that tomorrow, then it just puts us up to this next bigger level, this more important level at 86. And uh, you know, it just the odds don't favor upside, but you've got to be prepared for it. It just uh, it, it remains a, uh, a a bad bear market. Uh, important support is going to be found down near this 83 level. Uh, I think that you can look at 84 as well. You know, this afternoon's lows near 84, breaking back below that, then uh, it probably leads to a test of this. Maybe the maybe the five day moving average will hold the support. We'll see. I wouldn't give it much hope there, but uh, again. We'll We'll see what happens. Uh, and then, of course, the biggest level for this uh, market is found uh, down near this uh, $82, or I'm sorry, 80 and a half level. Breaking 80 and a half puts us, you know, puts last year's lows, uh, it, you know, makes them probably a reality.